Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to High Mileage Rider. Have you ever asked yourself, what would it be like to do an adventure motorcycle off-road riding course? Well, wonder no longer. Come along today as myself and my trusty V-Strom 1000 do the BMW off-road skills riding course through TNT Motorcycling. We're going to be meeting the guys at Argyle Motorsports and then driving out to Sherwood Park where the course is apparently set up. There will only be eight people in the class so it should be a very high instructor to learner ratio. We'll see you on the road. So as we're making our ride to Argyle Motorsports, I thought we'd take this time to ask ourselves a couple questions. One of the first questions I always like to ask myself before doing a riding course, of which I've done a few, for this BMW off-road riding course, what are my goals? Well, for me, I want to become a more confident rider on gravel and fire roads. And to do that, I need the tools to do it. I've never been much of an off-road rider, if we can call gravel roads off-road. I've uh, ridden sport bikes and cruisers of late. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, finding out what I'm doing wrong or what I can do right in order to make riding on gravel roads and fire trails a much more pleasurable experience. We'll see you there. So here we are coming up to Argyle Motorsports. As I may have said earlier, there are eight people in the class today. Oh, and look, the whole group is here already. So it looks like before we get any instruction on riding off-road, we actually have to ride off-road <laughs> to get to our site. Let's see how many times I drop the bike just trying to get into where we're going to learn how to ride. Oh, look at that. We've made it to the rally point. Bags are off the bike, making it lighter to pick up. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Okay. Down, it's real tough. Oh, not wave, it's down. Well, you don't well, maybe you do, I don't know. I was a Just go slow. Go slow as you can. Right? And just put yourself. Hmm. It takes really nothing to hold the front, doesn't it? 
think the hardest thing about walking it is finding that point where it doesn't take off and you start feathering your foot. Right, right. And now when you walk around this way, you think to yourself, oh, man, this doesn't take any energy. If I get the bike pad of you know, the engine doing the work, then my life is going easy. Yeah. Okay, so I'm... Uh, this is the one I don't like. Uh. So again, I don't know what this bike weighs, but it weighs oh, a lot. Okay. Let me get that side stand out of there. Side. Yeah, go side stand out. Just kind of lean yourself and let it just go down slowly. I mean, it's all grassy here. Okay, good. Okay, so the tires Again, are in the tires air. are off. Yeah, so which method do you think you want I'm going to go with the back because okay. I have a bad back. Okay. Okay, so, no, so the handlebars are going to turn towards you. So just oh, think, okay. so when oh, you're pulling right, that yes. bar as a support yep. and you're going back, that's fully locked. And then you've got a nice grip right here. Yeah. So first step is just get the wheels. There you go, no, just stop. Yep. Okay. See, a little bit more. Hold, it, hold the wheels up. Okay. No, no. No, no, you're right on, the, on your butt. Put your butt down against oh, okay. the seat. Good. There. Now, wheels are there, you feel yep. it? Yep. Okay, now, right? Yep. Try to look up. Okay, now, start pushing with your legs. And stutter back, <laughs> yeah? And stutter back. Good, just keep going. Oh, I see, lean against the seat. Yep. Yeah, good. Yeah, so it's down, right? And then you kind of pull, and then you go, you stutter back. Because if you try to pull all the weight, that's a lot, right? But if you stutter back, it'll pivot, it'll pivot the bike up. And that's all we're trying to do is trying to use your leverage. Now, try to look up in the sky, try to lift and walk towards. Can we do it? Walk, yeah, keep walking. This is heavier. I'll support it a little bit. I'm not doing too much. Okay? Keep walking forward. Keep walking forward. There we go. Okay. That's it's heavy. Try to get your legs out a little bit farther. See, it's really hard to shuffle back. There you go. There you go. That's much better. Okay. Now, on the wheels yep. first. So just pull a little bit. You feel it? Now, now, push back. Shuffle back. Shuffle back. Shuffle your feet. Shuffle your feet. There, like that. Okay. It's a weird feeling, right? Yeah. Let's go down slow. Good. Yeah. 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 Had this happen a couple of times, yes, Pull your legs off, keep your eyes up, and let the cuts do the work. See how I want to go over this way. So if we just practice, right? And then I want to stop, slow. You see how the bike is just about straight up and down? I certainly don't want to start having the weight where I feel all this on this side of the body. If it goes on the, uh, if it goes on the other, I try to walk it. I'm walking it, and then I just try to get on the seat. Now I can transfer. Oh, so oh you man, you got to stay the same. I don't want to rev it up or take away the power. Okay. So if I walk along, I don't know. Okay, I'll trust myself. We could move them. We know oh, how to move them. Right? Yeah, hit the triumph, dude. He's gonna aim for the orange one. No! Hit the triumph! Off road. If we were like this all the time off road, you can imagine how my weight and the bike's weight is gonna kind of move around, right? And then I'm gonna feel a lot more of the terrain, okay? If I'm standing up, right? When we stand up, now I've got some shock absorbers right my legs work better and what else happens is I can see better 
especially when we're talking about there we're in the bush a little bit you can kind of see forward a little bit more you have a better view of what's going on the downside is you can't see behind you right so they make mirrors and things like that where they have, I think there's a ram mount where you can move your mirror very easily some people will leave a mirror a certain way that they can see when they're standing up and when they go back on the road they have the other mirror so things change a little bit but what we want to think about or what we want to do is see what it's like when we're standing up so everybody stand up so now we're trying to transition our bikes from walking to sitting side saddle which is what I'm doing right now until I stalled <laughs> So walking beside the bike, we'll just get turned around out of these ruts. And we're side saddle. So now we're all going to follow the leader, practice what we've learned about standing up. Okay. Okay, well we'll give it a try here. So, going uphill, knees bent, knees into the tank, lean forward on the motorcycle to get more weight on the front wheel, and then going downhill, so when we're standing up, have two fingers over the controls, okay? And two fingers over the controls. I'm used to having four fingers, so this will be something new. Going downhill, keep your weight on the back of the bike. Bend your knees. Now we're keeping our weight back, going downhill, let the engine do the braking, two fingers over the controls. Absorbing the bumps with our knees. And most importantly, looking where we want to go. Lots of variation in bikes today. We have 1200 GSs. We have Triumph Tigers, the 1200s. We have a couple of F800 GSs and two Suzuki V-Strom 1000s. Start off with my foot on the peg. Oh, look at that, I'm an off-road man. No, not really. So everyone's breaking for lunch. And after lunch, we're gonna practice riding up and down hills, sideways on hills how to back and walk the bike back after being on the side of a hill. And we'll see how that goes. Well, this is going to be an improvised, imp, improvised water crossing story. My first time. Street tires. Paddling through is okay. We'll see what happens. Ha <laughs> ha!
a second just wait don't come in I have the traction control on the most just one sec I'll rock it <laughs> street tires <laughs> God, that's awesome. <laughs> I think I need new pants now. So the boots are waterproof if you don't dump them in the water. Okay, so now we're going to practice stalling out, going up a hill, and then recovering. Hands up. So did you turn the bike off, or just leave it on? Okay. So we, oh, we leave the bike on. We stalled it up the hill, and now we just press the clutch very slowly to work ourselves down the hill. No break. We just look behind to make sure nobody's behind us. Okay. Using engine braking to go down. No brakes. And hopefully not crashing at the bottom. this exercise we're practicing turning the bike by putting our weight into the peg, not our handlebars. And of course, using everything else, going up a hill, smooth steady throttle, leaning forward on the bike. Downhill, moving our weight to the back of the bike. Always looking up. Elbows up.
Okay, so this exercise is tight circle turning at steering lock, breathing on the pegs. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. First Suzuki's already down, so I should be okay. Right. Take a big loop and make it tighter and tighter. Okay. Well, we're back home after day one of the course. As you can see, we had fun. I found out that the V-Strom 1000 with stock Michelin Pilot 4 trail tires can in fact go through a marsh approximately three feet deep. Just remember to turn off the traction control before you get in. Morning, YouTube. Hi mileage rider here, still here, thankfully. We're at day two of our BMW off-road riding skills course, sponsored through TNT Motorcycling. Day one was quite the day, quite the revelation. First one is, I found that the V-Strom 1000 will go everywhere the other adventure bikes will go. Uh, it did really well. The second revelation is that it's maybe not the best bike to pick, especially with street tires to go through a two and a half foot deep muddy pit. Although it did make it, I got very wet. Second day is gonna involve gravel roads, fire trails, and who knows what else. Let's go find out. Well, here we are day two of the BMW off-road riding course through Argyle and Brewer Sports. That's their plug. Everybody came back, no worse for wear. The plan for today is we're going to do a little warm-up running through all the exercises we learned yesterday. Uh, balance point, moving our weight from the front to the back of the bike. Tight steering lock corners. Driving on the sides of hills, up the hills. Making sure to stall the bike and then how to get it down. We're going to go through some trails to learn about not fixating on roots and trees and stuff that are in the way. And then we're going to start doing some off-road higher speed stuff on gravel and fire roads. We'll catch you later. After, you'll try all one motion, right? And then I have to say to myself, right, where do I feel good? So right now it's pretty well straight, right? If, it's all, if I was on a um, very slippery surface, right, then I'd probably start thinking to myself, okay, I'm pretty good here. I'll do the back and forth, back and forth. Right, if I go a little bit more, or it's like, oh, now it's too hard for me to do. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty close. I think I can just straighten it out. Go lock the lock, okay? I'm on the top part of, top part of the motorcycle so it's pretty easy to put it up, right? Put my helmet on. It up, I'm like, okay, it's got to all kind of happen at the same time. Get the clutch in, start it up, and then away I go. Because when the clutch is in, right, I'm kind of holding it a little bit with the brake, I got to just kind of move. The more I think about it, the more nervous I'll get. I just got to think, get my transition back up on the pegs, get the clutch fully out, let the bike do what it's supposed to do, okay? So right now, I'm not too good. If I just go like that, see what happens? I notice the bike's not running, so I'm still gonna use, like I did here, the engine compression.
<laughs> well, it's working. <laughs> Here we go, boys and girls, riding on gravel, relaxed, standing, balance point, steer with the enduro steering with my feet, light hands, just let the bike go where it wants to go. Nobody's behind us, good, good, good. The instructor has told me to relax more. Enduro steering, the bike's not going to go anywhere. Relaxed hands. Look up. Let it search for traction. It's all good. Look up. Relaxed. The bike wants to go straight. The bike is not suddenly going to dive over. So this time down, same thing, except we're going to apply front and rear brakes.
so now we're going to go do some ruts, possibly ruts with water. Day two of the water crossing again. My win for rooster tail there. <laughs> of course. Well, that was for the video. Thanks, man. They're already wet, it went so. Real fast, eh? Is that what it was? Yeah. That's okay. Woo! Is that that on film? I sure. It's still filming. So what did I do? Right? You guys look good. I think it came a little faster. There's a little bit of a weird rut in here, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So now we just walk it up. Now we're going to try a little follow the leader. We barely know how to keep these bikes upright. And of course, we're going to try riding on a 4x8 pole going straight. Makes perfect sense.
and I made it. <laughs> Hey there YouTube, High Mileage Rider here. Just finished day two of the BMW Off-Road Riding Skills course and believe it or not, I passed. There's my official certificate. The biggest things I took away from this ride and this uh, course was for me how to ride on gravel comfortably. I can now average on the road we were today, 70 to 80 kilometers an hour, no problem, how to steer. And number two, how to aggressively break from that speed on gravel with the biking control. All in all, it was an amazing course. Learned a lot. Looking forward to my next adventure. I hope you'll join us as well.